born in church. The Lord is my life and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked advance against me to devour me, it is my enemies and my foes who will stumble and fall. Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though a war break out against me, even then I will be confident. One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. For in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his sacred tent and set me high upon a rock. Then my head will be exalted above the enemies who surround me. At his sacred tent, I will sacrifice with shouts of joy. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Hear my voice when I call, Lord, be merciful to me and answer me. My heart says of you, seek his face, your face. Lord, I will seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my helper. Do not reject me or forsake me, God my saviour. Though my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will receive me. Teach me your way, Lord. Lead me in a straight path because of my oppressors. Do not turn me over to the desire of my foes, for false witnesses rise up against me, spouting malicious accusations. I remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord, be strong and take heart, and wait for the Lord. Amen. Excellent reading. Thank you. Really, thank you very, very much. So we're going to do something a little bit different with this sermon today. We're going to be discussing its themes, and in particular looking at the theme of pressure. As you think about that psalm and what David's praying about, is David, King David here, there's clearly a lot of pressure either around him at the time or impending. He can feel it coming. And I don't know about you, but now and again, I feel the pressure, the pressure of life. And we're going to talk about that. But verse 4 is our key. And so what I've done is I've, I have, let's go back to verse 4. There's verse 4. I've written a, a short piece of music, which we can all learn together, to sing. And then hopefully that will help this particular verse, verse 4, to sink in and stay with us when we're done here today. This is verse 4. One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek. This only. This is the only thing I, I need and I ask. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him. Meaning in the Hebrew to study him to meditate on him, to seek him in his temple. So, let me play you this uh, short piece of music. It's like this.
I've got a question for you which I'd like you to discuss together for a few moments first is what is pressurizing David? Let's talk about his pressure at the moment. What is pressurizing him? What's going on? How is he feeling? So have a, have a discussion for a couple of minutes and then we'll come back together, okay? I'm looking at Psalm 27. Uh, what is pressurizing King David at this point in his life? What do you think is going on behind him writing this psalm? What do you, what do you see? Yes, Tywin. David got a lot of enemies. He's got a lot of enemies. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah? In the midst of battle. In the midst of battle. Asking for protection. Sorry? Asking for protection. Asking for protection. Yes. Yes. Do I see a hand over here? Someone? Yes. You may, you may feel that he's run out of um, good points with the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. There's a little bit of an insecurity on some level there, mixed in with a lot of confidence expressed. But there's a mix, isn't there? It's interesting. Yeah, it's not just one acting. He's scared. He's scared. He's afraid. Yeah. Is this the time he's like it's one of the times in the cave of Adullam when he was running from Saul? He was constantly on the run, basically, fighting and having to. I don't know, he was at risk. His life was at risk. So. That's a really good question. So I would say it's not entirely clear whether it was that time running away from Saul or the other time he ran away when he was running away from... When was the other time he ran away? Absalom, who was his... And most people who look at the Psalms think it might have been that running away. It could have been Saul, but it may be his son's trying to kill him. Yeah. I think... Lots of different things at once. It's a bit like when you open one email and it's a bad news email, and you think that's my bad email for the day. Yeah. Then you open the next one. Oh, that's bad news. Oh, and another one. That's and you get seven or eight emails, and they do about different things. And it's a bit. It's just so many sources of yeah. challenges in his life. Yeah, Liesel. Accusations, and she hate being accused. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, Stefan. In Maybe there was that. Maybe, maybe there was that threat. There was a possibility because of some behaviour or other situation. Yeah, he's under a lot of pressure, isn't he? Um, He's afraid, he's got enemies, malicious talk, probably he's being lied against. Uh, he's afraid of being devoured, besieged, of having war break out against him, of being unsafe and exposed, you know, vulnerable. Uh, he is also, I think, as you mentioned, Marek, the possibility that God is angry with him uh, because he does, uh, he does have some concern about that and whether maybe he might have been in some kind of sin that may have caused God's displeasure. That's a lot of pressure on one person, isn't it? Is it before or after? After. Probably after. If, if it's Absalom, the situation, then yes. So that could be in the back of his mind, what happened with him and Bathsheba. Uh, me and God, we're okay. <laughs> yes. David is often considered Israel's greatest king. Mm -hmm. But in fact, he was extremely insecure. Mm -hmm. And I think it's the insecurity that... Is, that all those things up there contribute to his insecurity. And let's face it, the Old Testament period was very insecure time anyway. Mm -hmm. There were very short periods of genuine peace. Mm -hmm. If you look through history, there were very little, great deal of in insecurity. I so, sorry, who was that? A uh, timer. I say, I think I Solomon. The what, sorry? Solomon. Solomon. I say, yeah, I was peace. Why Solomon was peace? Yeah. But if you look at the whole history of Israel, that's not very long. Yeah. You, you know, when you think about tens of scores and hundreds of years, there was some. Now, okay, so sh shift for a minute. Okay, that's David. What about, what about you? What are you feeling pressured about? What are we in society and in our world feeling pressured about? What, what's going on for us? What kind of things 
create the same kinds of feelings as David is having, even if they're not the same precise issues. So what kind of thing? Finances. Financial challenges. A lack of finances, <laughs> generally, right? Or things connected with that. Financial pressure. Always something has to be done. Besieged by the demands of love. Okay, just when you get something finished, you tick it off the to-do list, three other to-dos seem to be birthed directly as a result. Yeah, never-ending, yeah? Everyday living has its pressures. It does. Yeah. Uh, was there a hand? Yeah, expectations. Oh. Work, um, you know, the expectations will be there. Your own family, perhaps. Mm -hmm. own expectations. expectations, which can, can, it's funny, isn't it? Expectations are that double edged sword. Yeah. Because they can help you rise to something mm -hmm. positive, but on the other hand, they can be something to beat people over the head with. I expected you to get this done by now. That kind, that kind of pressure is very real for a lot of us. What other pressures do we have? Uh, decisions that you know you have to take and make in the future. Okay, so decisions. Big decisions. Big decisions and, and not knowing in advance whether they, they're going to be the... What's the right decision? Yeah. A lot of the time we really don't know. You're only looking back, can you tell? Lisa? Fear of failure or fear of not meeting expectations. Fear of not getting the yeah, the fear of those things and the reality sometimes of failing and the pressure that brings because sometimes we do fail at something. Yeah. Okay, anything else? Injustice. Injustice, yes, that's a good pressure, yeah? I think it's probably a bit faster for the children after exams. I think they're in school with pressure for the Yeah, believe it or not, children, although you feel pressure from exams, your, your parents or people are taking, trying to take care of you uh, feel some of that at least <laughs> as much. That's true. Yes. I, I think I felt pressure in the last week. We were in the process of uh, moving houses and packing up. And I was wrapping up my work. And then there was a fire. And the pressure I felt was not just on the things. It was just pressure that was put on me. I mean, my parents were calling me every day. I've seen your brother. I, think I literally had to take myself out and go there physically and call them. You've had a pressure from a lot of different directions this week, mm -hmm. the new job situation, the moving house. And for those of you who don't know, Io's brother's house burned down. Oh, uh, in the just, just some good news. We were able to go there on Friday. His house is the only one standing. Oh. Uh, the house, the fire went all round the car and just went around his house. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, but I mean, obviously, we still need to make sure the That's remarkable. That's wow. <laughs> All the other houses in the close were, were, were burnt. Yeah. Yeah. That's bad. You've, you've had a lot on your plate. <laughs> Sometimes, I don't know about you, it's quite nice to hear about other people's pressures because it puts your own. In, <laughs> firstly, it puts your own in perspective, and secondly, you think, oh, I'm not alone, right? <laughs> so, oh, gosh. Um, I would just like to say this before we move on to uh, the hopes David has. We'll talk about hope in a minute. But just to say, it's important that we talk to each other and the Lord about our pressures. If David felt he could be this honest and direct with God about his pressures, it's really important. Some of us may not feel under pressure right now, then, then I'm glad for you. Um, but there will be pressures in the week ahead. Perhaps some of us parents now got your children home for the summer. I'm sure that'll be great, but it changes dynamics. There can be some pressure with that, sometimes for the children. Now, instead of escaping to school and being with your friends, you actually have to deal with your parents all the time. And that can be a bit tough. I, yeah, some big time pressure. So whatever the pressures are for you or, or the Ukrainian family arriving for Kate and Barry, that'll be exciting in many ways, but it will add its own pressures. And we've all got things like that. We need to take them to God like David did. He can give us the peace we need. But now, okay, second question for us. 
Go back to the text and have a look. What is David hoping for? Go back to Psalm 27, have another look, and again, we'll have some discussion together uh, in, uh, you know, with, whoever, with whoever you're sitting next to. What is David hoping for? Kaiser. Safety. Yeah, he's hoping for safety, ultimately. Yeah. Sorry. He's hoping that he can trust that God is dependable. Yeah. Be there for him. Very good point. Yeah. I feel like there's a real wrestle going on in his heart in the sense that he's hoping that God's enough. He's asking to make straight paths. He's asking for him to teach him. Because I think when your enemies are so engulfing, so overwhelming, it's easy to have to give in to that and become one of those and take the heat off it. Does that make sense? You know, um, become just like them um, in order not to be killed. Yeah. Uh, turn himself over in that sense, in that sense. But he wants to stand his ground in a godly sense, but he's fearful that God's going to allow that and rescue him in, in that faith. Um, so it's better to be you know, when you join in, you know, you know, it's like a, we all have a daily pressure of, you know, do I conform and just become like the rest of the world, or do I stand my ground and stick the neck out, even though it's fearful. Yeah. He, he, he's hoping he can stand up God has to be enough to him. That God is enough to, wrestle yeah, to help him to not give in to the pressure around him. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I think he's hoping that um, he has short faith and peace in spite of what is going on. And he wants a sense of faith, a sense of peace that comes from you know, trusting that God is there in all properties. Mm. Yeah. In everything else that's going on, Joe. To be filled with joy in him. He wants joy, doesn't he? He wants something inside that's alive in him. Yeah. Anything else? I kind of got confused because he sees that he doesn't want to fight. Yeah. No, he sees okay. that he wants to go to the bottom of his troubles and put him in a safe and far, far away from trouble. And, and not stand and say, give me strength to crash them and defeat them. So just take me up away from them. He doesn't want to do the fighting, he wants God to do it for him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I like that, yeah, I, that would be good. Yeah, there was a hand. Yes. Um, I love that last bit. He says, I remain fast in the Lord, and I will yes. It's often very instructive to see where Psalms begin and where they end. And it's the wrestling that often happens in the middle. Kind of like a lot of our prayer times, I think. Anything else? He's hoping for things. I would say at least these. He's, he's it reminds me of Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, where he's, he's hoping that, obviously I'll give you the <laughs> I can take the cup away from him and just like, just deal with it, sort it out, don't roll me, but there's another way. Mm. But in the end, it comes to resolve it in his heart that like he yeah. God will be with him as he goes through it. He'll have enough strength. He wants confidence, doesn't he? He's hoping for confidence. He's hoping his enemies will fall. He's hoping that he can dwell with God. He's hoping to be safe and hidden from troubles. Uh, he wants his head exalted. Just to be able to lift his head up. He's hoping for answer prayer. I think he's hoping to see God's mercy, God's goodness. And as you said, Liesl, and he's hoping to see it while he's still alive. Not just once he's dead and gone, but he, in the land of the living, he wants to see God move. I think he wants to be, he's hoping to be accepted by God as he is, and there's some sense of being taught and led by God. Do you notice, and this is a topic for another time, but how many of these things are things that Jesus promises us? Think about it. All these things that David hoped for. And he did have on some level, but couldn't have in the same way that we have in our relationship with Jesus. Jesus gives us all these things. They're available. We can live in this, uh, this kind of hope. I, I would just like to make a, a, well, leave you with a question before making a final point, which is I hope that you have hopes for the summer. 
let's say. Hopes for what God will do. Hopes for the way God will be with you. Hopes for the way that God will work in you. Hopes for the way that the God will work through you. Because we can't just live passively. We should be people of hope. Living with hope means that saying, God, please, I'm hoping for this. Can you, could you, is this the right time for you to do this in my life or through me? What are your hopes for the summer? Uh, maybe you've got some hopes that are fairly sort of a, a standard. But what about some spiritual hope? What would you hope God will do in you over the summer? I, I think it's important for us to have some hopes in that sense. So let's go back to our, our theme scripture in verse 4, because I think this sums it up. There's one thing he asks for in verse 4. One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek. So these things will sort out everything else we're talking about. One thing I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord, to seek him in his temple. Now this is the first in a series of, ser of sermons called One Thing. And here, there's just one thing David asks. And in our lives, when the pressure comes, and things get complicated, and our brains get somewhat divided and scattered by all the crazy stuff that's going on around us and even in our own heads, it's so important that we remember that we only need, always, only ever need, one thing above all others, to ask for the right things. Asking for the right things, desiring the right things, makes all the difference in our walk as a Christian. One thing I ask of the Lord, this I only do I seek, to dwell in the house, to dwell, that's the word in the Hebrew that's used for when a, a, couple, a, a couple get married and move in together. Dwelling in that sense with the Lord. All the days of my life. Uh, he's looking for God to not be uh, like a watering hole he comes across occasionally when he's particularly thirsty, but more that God is like a stream that is always beside him, that is always refreshing him. This is our walk with God. Dwelling in the house of the Lord all the days to gaze on the beauty of the Lord. Now here's a, a suggestion for a Bible study you might want to do. Right, do your own Bible study on the ways in which God is beautiful. What is truly beautiful about God? You might want to get a piece of paper and start writing down your ideas of what is beautiful about God. And do some, do some Bible study and have your own ideas. What does it mean to gaze, to be captivated by, to be fascinated by God's beauty? I think you might find that a very refreshing thing uh, to do. So how does David see God? David's Lord is his light. David's Lord is his salvation in this psalm. David's Lord is his stronghold, a safe place to be. David's Lord is the one who keeps him safe from his enemies. And we do have spiritual enemies. David's Lord is the one who hides him when he needs to be hidden. David's Lord is the one who sets him high above those forces and people who would destroy him. And David's Lord, most personally and relationally, is the one who receives him, as he receives every one of us. Receiving because he loves. Only God can change you and me when we're under pressure. And only Jesus can give us what we hope for and need. Jesus is our light and our salvation. He is our stronghold. He does keep us safe. He is our good shepherd. He hides us. He sets us high. He receives us. That's why we worship him. In John 14, he says, Don't let your hearts be troubled, troubled by all the pressure. You believe in me? Good. You believe in me? In my Father's house, there are many rooms. And I'm going there to prepare a place for you. You are welcome in my Father's house. And if I go there, prepare a place, I'll come back and take you. I will take you there to be where I am. That's the promise to each one of us. We have hope. So what I'd like us to do is um, sing our song again.
And we've seen that two or three times through, and Taiwo, Taiwo is going to come up and then pray, and then we'll take bread and wine together, remembering what Jesus has done for us, especially that even under pressure, he, as you mentioned in Gethsemane, and on the cross, he never lost his trust in, in God. So at the very end, he said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. He gave his spirit to his Father. He trusted him. So we can trust him too. Wow.